Good morning, Greater Lake Trobe. From the WCA TTV studio, I'm Ramaya Henderson alongside Quinlan Mulroy. Coming up in today's show, there's a German club meeting today. The senior photo will be taken on Wednesday, and reporter Lily Haverly takes a look at how new coordinators are assisting with the fall play. All this and more on your WCAT TV news. There will be a pep club meeting on Tuesday, October 11th for grades 10 through 12 during Lunch and Learn 1 in Mrs. Fry's room, A4 in the junior high. Ninth graders will also meet during their Lunch and Learn 1 in Mrs. Fry's room, A4 in the junior high. Everyone is welcome. Attention seniors, the senior class picture will be on October 12th. All seniors should report to the office gym at 9 a.m. We will be checked in and then guided down to Rossi to receive your spot. All seniors should wear a black shirt with jeans, preferably, but any pants will work. Juniors will be taking the PSAT on Wednesday. Remember to bring two non-mechanical pencils and a calculator to the test. The Ambassador Action Team is looking for five student volunteers to help at the high school in the morning of Friday, October 14th. If you're interested, please email or see Ms. Pellegrino. The library will be closed during a number of periods this week and during upcoming weeks due to multiple simultaneous classes taking place in the library. Anytime the library is closed, there will be a sign on the library door. Otherwise, feel free to come inside. Sorry for any inconvenience. There will be a German club meeting today during Lunch and Learn 2, today in B201 for all 10th through 12th grade members. Now, let's get a check on the weather. We go to Gianna Lewis for the three-day forecast. Hey Wildcats, here's your three-day forecast. Today we have a high of 62 and a low of 40 with sunny skies. On Tuesday, there will be a high of 65 and a low of 40 with sunny skies. And lastly, on Wednesday, we will see a high of 70 and a low of 45 with partly sunny skies. That's your three-day forecast. Thanks and back to you. Thanks, Gianna. There will be a financial aid night for parents on Thursday, October 13th in the CSC from 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. Seniors are encouraged to share this information with their parents. The Challenge Program is once again offering a $200 Community Service Award for students who have completed Community Service Hours. Current seniors and current juniors are eligible and are asked to submit all of their Community Service Hours from last school year to Mrs. Yetter by Wednesday, October 12th. One senior and one junior will each be selected for this award. The next program is offering a Lunch and Learn Speaker Series in the CSC. The next presentation will be on Friday, October 21st at 11 a.m. featuring a professional cybersecurity expert and hacker. Any student's grades 10 through 12 is welcome to attend and bring their lunch. Please pre-register with Ms. Yetta if you would like to attend either presentation and for a chance to win prizes. We now go to Tyler Nelson for the Wildcat Sports Support. Good morning, Wildcats. Tonight, only one Wildcat sports team is in action. Your JV and varsity girls soccer team faces off against Franklin Regional Panthers tonight on Rossi Field. JV starts at 6 and varsity begins at 7.30. Good luck, girls. That's all for Wildcat sports, and now we head to Richard Hillwig for national sports. Thanks, Tyler. In national sports, the MLB playoffs have begun with the best of three wildcard series coming to an end and the division series getting underway tomorrow. And in the NFL, Monday Night Football features an AFC West rivalry between the Las Vegas Raiders and the Kansas City Chiefs. The Raiders are looking to build off of their first win of the season against the Broncos last week. As for the Chiefs, they seemingly haven't seemed to slow down after losing Tyreek Hill with a 3-1 start and look to be, once again, one of the elite teams in the stacked AFC this year. That's all for National Sports. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Richard. The Drama Club has created new coordinator positions to assist with the fall play production. Here's reporter Lily Haverly with the story. Every year, the Greater Latrobe Senior High Drama Club has gone above and beyond to create and produce high-quality productions produced by your own talented student body. And as amazing as our singers, dancers, and actors are, it takes even more work behind the scenes to make shows like these possible. Recently, the Drama Club enacted committees, student-run groups that are used to take up more responsibility outside of performing on stage. These committees include props, costumes, hair, and makeup, social media, publicity, and more. So as the Dramatics Director, I found that I was doing a ton of behind-the-scenes stuff um, that was taking up a lot of my time, just organizing costumes and taking measurements and um, getting props organized and collecting props. And there was just a whole bunch of things that were going on. And I recognized that if I could delegate those responsibilities to someone else, uh, that would be a huge weight off of my shoulders. 
And I knew we had this talented group of students who were ready to take on more. So um, really, I wanted the students to take more ownership of their show. And that's exactly what the committees did. All of a sudden, people were just completely on board with this is our show and we're going to do all the things for it. So it was great. These committees are headed almost entirely by students who were selected the year prior. These students are known as coordinators who work together in small groups in order to assign tasks and work alongside the rest of their members. So my committee is props and our job is to make sure everything on the stage is set where it needs to go and figure out where it goes afterwards. While some coordinators take on a more managerial position, assigning roles to other members that keep these committees running like a well-oiled machine. As a coordinator, I have to make a Pinterest board with hairstyle designs and as well as makeup designs. And I also host a workshop that teaches people how to do stage makeup. And I will also assign people to do hair makeup. Um, and it depends on like what their skill is stronger with. As a coordinator and not just on the committee, um, we are more responsible um, for the costumes, making sure everything is very organized, nothing gets damaged, everything gets returned properly. Um, we are the heads of the committee, so we kind of run everything behind the scenes and take care of everybody underneath us. But we would be nothing without these volunteers that really help to make these committees feel like a community. We're looking for people who are dedicated to the drama program. It doesn't necessarily mean you need to be singing and dancing and um, acting on stage, but it might be that you're really good at hair and makeup and we could use you. Um, or it might be that um, you're good at organizing things or keeping track of things, or you're really good at designing things for social media. There's all kinds of ways that you could be involved in a club. So many members in and out of shows who work together to help make a show that we can all look back on with pride. Joining a committee is a fantastic way to stay active in the more creative side of our school as well as teaching leadership and community driven skills that will surely help you succeed in the future. It's just a good way to get involved and have fun and you make a lot of new friends whenever you're in this club and in any of the committees. It's a ton of fun, you'll meet a ton of new people there and we can't wait to see you there. It's super fun, it's a great way to get involved in the drama club, especially if you don't like to act or sing or dance um, because that can be kind of nerve wracking. But if you want to do stuff behind the scenes, um, there are so many different committees to be a part of and we would love to have you. Hopefully this segment helps shine a light on all the hard work that you don't necessarily see on stage. Reporting for WCAT TV, I'm Lily Haverly. Thanks Lily. Wondering what's on the menu today? Here's Delaney Mulroy with What's Cooking. What's cooking late show? Cooking up in the main line, we have double cheeseburger, fabulous french fries, and pearl peas and carrots. In the sandwich line, we have hamburger, cheeseburger, and chicken patties. In the pizza line, we have Big Daddy Pizza with cheese and pepperoni. In the grab and go bar, we have fresh salads and deli hoagies. The soup of the day is beef noodle. That's what's cooking. Thanks and back to you. Thanks, Delaney. The following colleges will be in the common area during lunch and learn. Now, here's Emily Sweeney with Wildcat World News. Good morning, Latro. Today in World News, those evacuated from Hurricane Ian returned to mud and rubble covering everything, and the death toll has hit 101 people. Of those 101 people, 92 were killed in Florida. Next up, in California, an eight-month-old baby, her parents, and her uncle were all kidnapped and killed. The suspect once worked for the family's trucking business and had a long-standing feud with the family. The suspect is a 48-year-old man named Jesus Salgado, and a sheriff called prosecutors to seek the death penalty. And in local news, registration is now open for Greensburg's annual turkey trot. The date for this race is set for November 24th, and the turkey trot attracts more than 2,000 participants and will begin at 9 a.m. Race registration can be completed at gbgturkeytrot.com. That's all for world and local news. Back to you. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of WCATTV News. Have a great day, Latrobe. We are GL. Go Wildcats!